Hello, this is the Stories Beside channel. I release videos every day for you. Subscribe and click the bell. Jean ran nervously to the train ticket office. She thought about how to catch the train to go to her mother's house. The woman came running and breathed a sigh of relief because she had time to buy a ticket. And soon she boarded the train. The woman sat down on a bench closer to the window. Jenna took out a small bottle of mineral water and greedily chugged a few gladkas. And then the woman imagined that she would soon meet her mother and what kind of conversation she would have with her. These thoughts made Jenna's mood spoil even more, and she absolutely did not want to today. A new teacher to talk to. She was tormented by a hangover. The woman dreamed of only one thing, that her mother gave money for Chikotka. Jenna was distracted from her thoughts by a woman's voice. The stranger who had visited her said, You must have had a great time yesterday. Look at you, and it feels like you sat down not a day, but a whole week. You must have a headache. Let me give you a pill. At least you'll feel a little better. You're so kind to everyone, Jenna said. And she looked at the stranger who had arrived nearby. She was an old woman, not to everyone. It's just that if you look at you from the outside, it's obvious that you're not only hungover, but something else. That's a good point. I'd like to say that life is a disgusting thing. Why are you so focused on fate? Life is God-given and you have to live it skillfully. And then everything will be fine. How easy is it for you to say? You probably didn't know all the troubles in life. I've had more than enough of them. Why don't you share your sorrows? Maybe it'll make it easier for me to get to the last stop. Where are you going? Jenna looked at her companion and wanted to answer her rudely. But then something made her not to. The woman looked across from her. Where was the gray-haired man sitting? He was reading a hunting magazine and was completely indifferent to the conversation between the two women. And at that moment the stranger spoke again. What are you afraid of? We are going with you and our paths will hardly cross afterwards. Maybe I can give you some advice for your troubles. My name is Kelly. What's yours? Jenna said softly and then named the city she was going to. And after that she wondered, maybe she should really tell about her life. She had no one to talk to at the moment and that made her feel a little bit sick to her stomach. And Jenna also thought that in this way the time would pass faster and the new acquaintance is unlikely to meet again. So you can tell about your fate without fearing anything. The woman was silent for a while, looking out the window, and then turned to Kelly and said softly, All right, only I will be truthful in my narrative, and please do not supply me with cautionary advice afterward. I am a grown woman. You're old enough to be my daughter, but let it be as you say. I won't give you any advice. And if you need it, you can ask for it. Jenna herself thought about it and looked at the man sitting across from her, who was still reading a magazine and showed no interest in the conversation between the two women. So the woman decided to tell her life story frankly. She turned to her new acquaintance and began the story. Jenna was born in a family where her parents worked at the factory as an auxiliary worker. Her mother and father loved their daughter very much. She was their only child. When Jenna was 12 years old, her father died suddenly of a heart attack. The girl's mother Camille was very worried about the loss of her husband. It had been a year since her spouse's funeral. Camille hoped that now she would be able to find her happiness as a woman again. Her mother Lisa often told her about it. You lost your sweet tyrant, but you don't bury yourself anew. You will still find your other half. However, the years went by and Camille was never able to arrange her personal life. So she gave all her love to her daughter. Jenna saw this and appreciated her mother. She tried to make her mother proud of her success in school. Years passed and Jenna graduated from high school and immediately afterward told her mother, Mammy, I will go to the city where grandma lives. Daughter, why not in our town? We don't have a culinary college and you know that grandma is already old she needs help, and that's what I'm gonna be. I promise you, sweetheart, I'll call you every day, 
and soon I'll let you know that I've become a culinary artist you'll be proud of. I already know you're a good cook. Your grandmother taught you how to make good borscht. I never did. I guess my hands are in the wrong place. Don't say that. It's just that not everyone is blessed with the gift of great cooking. I understand you're letting me go to my grandmother's. What am I supposed to do? It's not like I can lock you up in here. I hope you don't lock me up. And soon Jenna went to stay with Lisa's grandmother. She enrolled in culinary school and was eager to get started. Jenna actually studied very well. Teachers repeatedly put the girl as an example to other students. It was here. In the college she met Miranda, with whom they became friends. The girls shared their secrets with each other, and in their free time after studying walked around the city. Soon Jenna graduated from the culinary college and went to work in the canteen of a poultry farm, where she had an internship. The girl was gladly taken here to work, as she was able to show herself here in an exemplary way, and at the same time to surprise the staff skillfully prepared borscht. The girl worked in the canteen for six months and often heard compliments about her culinary abilities. Jenna realized that guys in this way wanted to get acquainted with her, but she did not see in them the man with whom she would like to date. At home at the same time she was being hired by her grandmother. Why still alone without a boyfriend? The girl did not understand why she wanted to have a young man, and that's why she asked her grandmother a question. Do you want to marry me off as soon as possible? No, granddaughter, what are you doing? I just look at you and I see that you only talk to your girlfriend. You don't pay any attention to guys. You're not gonna sit around with the old kids, are you? No, of course not. It's just not time yet. A month went by after that conversation. Jenna was at work, as suddenly heard the voice of a stranger, who was interested, and who is it that cooked such a borshit? The girl looked at the man and saw that he had a disgruntled face. Jenna was afraid that the first dish she had that day did not succeed. She approached the stranger and quietly mumbled, Are you not satisfied with borscht? On the contrary, it's the best. And I'd like to see this virtuoso chef to thank him. It's more of a cook. I made this borscht. And I'm very pleased to hear that you like the first course. The man looked at the girl with surprise then smiled and said that he did not expect such a truly culinary masterpiece from a pretty blonde. The girl was embarrassed by the words of the stranger and then thanked the man and wanted to go back. As he stopped her, the young man asked if he could meet her and complimented her. Jenna wanted to refuse, but then she looked at the man and suddenly realized that she really wanted to meet this man. She was charmed by his blue eyes from the very first moment. The girl shyly said, we are going to get acquainted right here. I would like a more romantic setting. Let you give me your phone number, and I'll call you today. And I think we'll find some cozy cafes where we can have a nice chat. Jenna quickly dictated her phone number, and then promptly left the stranger. Only when she found herself in the kitchen, she realized that if this man called her, she wouldn't even realize it was him. Since she didn't know his name, Jenna had been on pins and needles all day. She involuntarily looked at the phone, waiting for a call. The working day was coming to an end, and the girl had no hope that the blue-eyed stranger would call, but she was wrong. As soon as she finished her shift, the phone rang. Jenna purely intuitively understood that if she answered the cell phone now, it would be a morning visitor who complimented her on the first course and the girl was not mistaken. It was a stranger calling. He introduced himself as Benjamin. The man, without giving the girl time to answer, said that he was waiting for her at the exit. Soon Jenna met with a new acquaintance. Benjamin suggested a ride around the city, and in 15 minutes the couple was riding in the car and talking casually. Jenna told a little about herself, and then the man told about his life. Benjamin said that he was 27 years old. He himself comes from a village. But since there is not much work there, he moved to the city where he got a job as a cab driver. He himself rents a room and lives one of man's stories. The girl also learned that Benjamin was not married and is now in active search of the one and only with whom he would like to live all his life. 
Jenna smiled after these words and asked, And how is your search going? At the moment I can say that it is very good. I think I am on the right path, because my traveling companion is very similar to the one and only. By the way, I also have a question tell me. Why are you so beautiful? And you don't have a boyfriend? Maybe I'm just like you in the active search for my soulmate. Then I have a chance to be that soulmate. But I have one more tricky question. Benjamin said with a smile. Go ahead. Are you only good at making borshit? Of course not. I can make a good one. Julienne rolls. Milk soup. There are other dishes that I make that I'm great at. It's just that borscht is my calling card. I can't wait to try it all. The couple drove around for a while, and then the man took the girl home. He asked permission to see her again. The girl did not refuse. The next day, Benjamin met Jenna again after work, and they again rode around the city. They had a lot of topics to talk about, and the girl felt as if she had known this man for years. It was so easy and simple to communicate with Benjamin. After this date, their meetings became more frequent. What didn't escape Jenna's grandmother? And when the girl once again arrived home late after a date, Lisa asked quietly, Maybe you can tell me where you've been disappearing lately. Grandma, well, I have to have my privacy. I don't mind at all. I just thought you and I didn't have any secrets. I guess the old lady was wrong. You're not an old lady. You're my grandmother-in-law. All right, I'll tell you. I met a young man, and we've been dating for over a week now. Yeah, I've noticed you've been coming home in a high mood lately. It's like you've grown wings, which only happens when a girl has a lover. I hope I at least deserve to meet this guy who's won you over. I'll introduce you. Just give me some time. A month passed as Jenna dated Benjamin. The girl realized that she fell in love with this man with all her heart, and so she was waiting for his declarations of love. And soon it happened. Benjamin took her to a cafe, where he presented her with a thin gold ring and asked her to marry him. Jenna carefully took the box and mentally thought that the day had finally come, and out loud she said, I agree to be your wife. This was followed by an introduction first with Jenna's grandmother, and then with the girl's mother, and then with Benjamin's parents. All the couple's relatives were happy that the two loving people would soon start a family, except that Miranda was not pleased as she found out about Jenna's acquaintance with her boyfriend. Cindy said so and said, Mates, I didn't expect you to be the last one to introduce me to your lover. But no offense. You were out of town. You were on vacation. How am I supposed to introduce you from a distance? You'd better be happy for me that I'll soon be a married lady. You could have at least told me on the phone that you have a boyfriend. Okay, I won't sulk. Your Benjamin is cute. I would joke with him myself, Miranda said with a smile. On the eve of the wedding, Jenna confessed to the chosen one that she had no intimate relations with representatives of the stronger sex. Her words very surprised Benjamin. He promised that he would be gentle and affectionate with her on the first wedding night. Soon the wedding took place. After the celebration, Benjamin moved to live in Lisa's apartment. Grandmother was happy that the newlyweds would live with her. The elderly woman happily announced that once the couple had a baby, she would be the most loving great-grandmother. Six months passed after the wedding. The newlyweds lived between them soul to soul, then pleased their loved ones. Jenna considered herself the happiest woman in the world, as she loved her husband with all her heart. Now she only dreamed of having a baby in their little family. A few more months passed, and one morning Jenna felt unwell. She got out of bed, quickly headed to the restroom, where she suddenly threw up. The girl was at a loss as to what could have happened to her. She came out of the restroom and fell faint. The young woman proceeded to the kitchen and sat down on a chair. Her grandmother came up to her and asked her pale today. Shouldn't you say hello? I can't understand it myself. I feel weak all over my body. I'm dizzy, and now I've thrown up. Granddaughter, I have a sneaking suspicion that you're in a rather interesting position. All the signs you've mentioned are there. In what interesting position? Jenna asked, perplexed. I'm assuming you're pregnant. Really? But I'm not a gynecologist to make accurate predictions. 
I think you need to go to a women's health clinic. Grandma, it's like you're living in the Middle Ages. I can find out if I'm pregnant right now. Since they sell tests at the drugstore, make an appointment at the clinic. I have to wait a few days for that, which means I'd be in the dark the whole time. But since you are so advanced, you will have time before work to run to the pharmacy and buy this test, which does the work of a gynecologist. The woman said with a smile. Jenna kissed her grandmother and hurried to the pharmacy. And soon the girl was already buying the test. She came home excited, as she dreamed of only one thing, that the result was positive. As soon as Jenna entered the apartment, then immediately followed the baths. The young woman did the appropriate procedure and then watched two blue streaks appear on the litmus paper. She clapped her hands happily as this meant that the result was positive. She came out of the bathroom and proudly announced the glad tidings to her grandmother. Now Jenna thought about how to present this news in an original way to her beloved spouse, who at that moment was already at work. Soon the young woman went to work. All that day she thought of how to inform her spouse about it. I came to mind only one way. And so Jenna was already home and waiting for her husband to come home from work. As soon as Benjamin entered the apartment, then the chosen one approached him with a mysterious look. She handed him two pieces and offered to choose one of them. The husband looked at his life partner with bewilderment and said something new today. How are you meeting me? What surprise awaits me? You do not rant, but choose. Well, obeying, choosing right, Jenna gave birth to a fist, and Benjamin saw on the palm of his spouse's hand a pink ball, on which was written a girl. The young woman laughed and spoke excitedly. Just now, my beloved, you have chosen the sex of the child. It means that you and I will soon become parents of a girl. You mean you are pregnant? That's exactly what I'm saying. Look, there's a blue balloon hidden in this fist. Now it's safe to say that you and I are having a baby girl. I understand you took a pregnancy test, but they're not always 100% positive. You need to see a gynecologist. I'll make an appointment tomorrow. But tell me, are you happy about it or not? What kind of stupid question is that? Of course I'm excited. And with these words, the man picked up his wife in his arms and surrounded her in a corridor. A few days later, Jenna visited the women's counseling center, where a woman in a white coat with a smile congratulated her with a joyful event. Namely, the doctor said that Jenna would become a mom in a few months. The young woman thanked the doctor and then left the gynecologist's office. Time went on. The first half of the pregnancy, Jenna went without complications. But in the second period, problems began. Doctors did not like the tests of the young woman. She was put in the hospital, and almost until the birth, Jenna was in a hospital bed. The young woman was ready to endure everything, only if the child was born healthy. And here came the long-awaited day when Jenna was taken to the labor room. And at that moment, the young woman thought that she was in hell, as the labor lasted more than seven o'clock. And when the baby came into the world, at that moment she made a vow to herself that she would not give birth again. Jenna was soon discharged with her son. The baby was named Michael. And from this day for a young woman began a new stage in life where she was now a mom. The girl is happy to babysit the baby. In this she was helped by her grandmother. But at the same time, Jenna did not forget to pay attention to her spouse. Life slowly went on. And now Michael was three years old. The young woman arranged the baby in a kindergarten. Lisa was against it, but her granddaughter explained to her that at this age children need contact with peers and the most suitable place for this kindergarten. Two months flew by. Jenna was already working in the canteen again, and there was grief in the family. Suddenly, Lisa died of a heart attack. The passing of her loved one was a terrible blow to Jenna. She could not recover for a month, and went to the cemetery every day. The young woman was able to come to terms with the loss of her loved one only after a month. Time moved on, and Michael graduated from first grade. Jenna went to her mother's house for the summer with her son. Before this, having coordinated her departure with her husband, the husband was not against it, as almost every year they took Michael to Camille. 
And now Jenna is already at her mother's house. She tells her mother about her son's achievements at school and also reports how she and her husband are doing. And then she quietly tells her mother, you know, here's the thing. Why do you tell me everything as it is? Camille said anxiously, mom, I'm pregnant and I don't know what to do. Oh, come on. I thought something was wrong. Something happened. And you're telling me the good news. What's there to guess? You, Machelka, should get a baby sister. Yes, I have a fear after the first birth. But that's not the point. The point is that Michael is already a pretty big boy. And I feel like there's gonna be too much of an age difference between the kids. What kind of nonsense are you talking about? Some women have children more than 12 years apart, and they're not afraid of anything. The main thing here is that you will bring up your children in love and harmony with your husband. By the way, does your husband know that you're pregnant? No, I haven't said anything yet. I came to consult with you, to get your opinion. Well, you got it. Your father and I weren't allowed to have a second child, and I would have loved to have another one, but God didn't give it to us. A short time later, Jenna returned home to her husband. She had already decided that she wanted a second child, but the woman left the last word to her husband. Jenna realized that if her husband disagreed, she would not go against his will. And as soon as the woman arrived home, on the same day sat down with her chosen one to talk. The girl took Benjamin by the hand and softly said, You know, honey, here's the thing. I'm in a situation, and you and I now need to decide whether we want a second child or not. That's very interesting. And you're just telling me now. I've been thinking about it for a long time, so I've been holding off on telling you. If you don't mind, it's not too late for me to terminate the pregnancy. Why don't you decide for yourself? If you want another baby, I won't say a word. Then I choose to have another baby voice in our family. I love you very much. Shortly after this conversation, Jenna got registered at the Women's Counseling Center. The woman was very worried that her pregnancy would go the same way as the first time. However, this time, everything went well. In the first semester, Jenna greatly added weight, which did not hide from her husband. And Benjamin, looking at his wife, said if it goes on like this, then you will become like a round ball. Where is the waste not to be found? But this is pregnancy. Women at this time is characterized by weight gain. After the birth, those pounds will go away. I really hope so. But I would advise you to be a little more modest in your eating. These words really hurt Jenna. She could hardly restrain herself from crying at this conversation. But soon, when she met her friend, the hurtful words were waiting for her again. Miranda, seeing her friend, sarcastically said, Wow, how did you blow up? Your spouse hasn't told you about it yet. You've definitely increased the size of the outfit in your closet. You too, you know damn well, I'm pregnant. And I've gained all these extra pounds because of it. I thought you'd be supportive, but you just took offense. Well, you and I agreed to always tell each other the truth. Why would I lie to you? After this conversation, Jenna came home and burst into tears. She was hurt that her husband and close friend were making fun of her like that. And just as she finished crying, she suddenly felt a sharp pain in her lower abdomen. The woman sharply shrieked and quickly dialed the number of an ambulance. And already in half an hour, Jenna was hospitalized. The rest of the woman remembers as in a fog. There's a plate above her head with a lot of lights on it. Then some kind of mask with a tube over her nose and mouth. And then darkness. Jenna woke up only the next day and soon learned that she had lost the baby. The woman sobbed, as she had not expected it at all. In the evening of the same day, her husband came to her. Jenna looked guiltily at her husband and asked, Do you think I am to blame for everything? No, I guess it had to happen. Don't blame yourself and get well. What did the doctor say? Why did it happen? I didn't ask. Why bother? What's past? Sorry, I can't stay long because I have to pick up my son from school. Jenna wanted to ask her husband something else, but he had already left the room. The woman turned her head to the wall and cried silently.
She felt a vague coldness from her husband at this moment. Soon Jenna was discharged. When she got home, she wanted to talk to her husband about the loss of the child. However, Benjamin flatly refused to talk about this topic. The man said, when the spouse began to insist on talking, let's not spoil the relationship, you're fine. And that's the most important thing. Now get on with your health. It has been a month since Jenna was released from the hospital. During this time, the woman noticed that her life partner had drifted away from her. He wasn't rude, he didn't say hurtful words. The man just became distant. Benjamin was no longer interested in how the wife had a day at work. All these changes of the husband had a negative impact on the emotional state of the wife. And one day Jenna felt sick at work. She felt shaggy in the whole body head compressed as if by an iron hoop, and she suddenly lost consciousness. A day later, Jenna woke up in the hospital under an IV. The woman looked around, and she saw a nurse. She called out a girl in a white coat. And she, seeing that the patient came to herself, hurried to her with the words, You're awake. That's wonderful. I'll get the doctor, and he'll examine you. Wait, tell me, what happened to me? Did you have an operation? The doctor will tell you more about that. Jenna wanted to ask the nurse something else, but the girl had already left the room. Soon the doctor appeared. The man asked how she was feeling, and only then answered all her questions. The only thing that Jenna understood from the doctor's answers is that she has a genetic disorder in her body. She will have to stay in the hospital for a long time. After the doctor's words, the woman sighed tiredly. She had always thought she was healthy. And here, it turned out to be different. Jenna felt that tears came to her eyes. The man in the white coat noticed it. He looked sternly at the patient and said, but you should not let your tears flow. If you get upset, you will only make your body worse. Now the main thing is that you are safe and sound. And the worst is over. Tell me, do my husband and son know I'm in the hospital? Yes, my husband came by, wondering when he could visit you. Now, as soon as your husband calls or comes, we'll let him know he can visit you. I think your husband's support will be good for you. Now try to get some sleep. You need your strength. With these words, the doctor smiled some more and then left the room. That same day in the evening, Benjamin came to his wife. He brought a bouquet of flowers and a bag of fruit. The man sat down next to his wife and with a smile mouthed that he was happy to see her. Jenna looked lovingly at her life partner and asked how Michael was doing. The husband replied that they were doing well and they were doing great together in the household. Benjamin asked his wife not to worry about anything, to gain strength and promised that he would visit her as often as possible. When Benjamin left, Jenna felt relieved. It seemed to her that her sudden illness had changed her husband's attitude toward her. She really hoped that now they would have the same relationship again that they had after the wedding. At first her husband visited her faithfully, but then his visits became less frequent. Jenna became concerned, and when Benjamin came again, she asked him why did you come so rarely? I miss you, I worry about you, don't get me wrong. I have to work, and look after my son, and manage the household. I don't have ten hands. After her husband said that, Jenna felt embarrassed. After all, the man she loved actually took on all the household chores. And on top of that he had to work. The wife apologized to her husband, and then a solution came to her mind on how she could help her husband handle all the chores. As soon as Benjamin left, Jenna called a friend and explained the whole situation to her. Miranda, hearing that her friend was in the hospital, was very surprised and said, why didn't you call me before? I would have visited you a long time ago. I would have brought you some fruit or other sweets. I don't need anything. You can just come to my place tonight. I want to talk to you. Okay, no problem. In the evening of the same day, Miranda was already sitting next to Jenna. She was listening to the fact that Benjamin needed help with the household chores. Cindy, hearing her friend's request, responded eagerly and said, of course, I'll help Benjamin. 
I can imagine that while you are in the hospital for two weeks, he is probably cooking pasta or scrambled eggs for himself and his son. Don't worry, girlfriend about your husband. Thank you, Cindy. I knew you'd teach me. No need to thank me. Girlfriends should always help each other. Listen, I haven't seen you in a while, and I think you've put on weight again. The visitor said, looking at Jenna critically, maybe you're right. After all, I'm on hormones now, and they often make you fat. And you know, where can I move here? Mash, don't push my weight on me. Some time passed, and soon Jenna was discharged from the hospital. The woman happily returned home. She already missed her husband and son. She wanted to live again as one with her family. However, she was disappointed. On the first day after her return at night, she wanted intimacy with her husband, but he refused her. The woman was shocked and directly asked why he was doing that. Benjamin looked at his wife seriously and pronounced, You've only recently come out of the hospital. You can't settle for everything at once. You have to recover a little, and then you can have some nighttime fun. Jenna initially took her husband's words as concern for her health. She was pleased because her husband was worried about her. But a week passed, and the girl realized that she made wrong conclusions because during this time, Benjamin began to stay at work more often. And coming home, when she tried to hug him, he dismissed her, saying that he was tired today. And Jenna purely intuitively realized that this is not about tiredness. And once again, when her husband was again delayed at work, she waited for him and said, Honey, let's not play a play with you. You keep telling me that you are tired at work, but you were working earlier and we were fine in bed. And now everything has changed overnight. Why don't you tell me what's going on? You're the one who wanted to have this conversation, not me. First of all, you've stopped looking after yourself. Look at what you look like. In a word, Aria's wife from Slade Girl Asora. And two, I'm just not attracted to you as a man to a woman. But we were fine before. Now it's like a magic wand. Your attitude to me changed with tears in her eyes, said the wife. Meanwhile, the man, not paying attention to his wife, gathered his things in a bag. Jenna looked at the actions of her favorite person with horror. She tried to stop him by talking about her feelings for him. Benjamin paid no attention to his spouse and continued packing. When Jenna grabbed his hand and said, what are you doing? You and I love each other. Yes, we're going through some rough times right now and I've gotten a little out of shape, but it's all gonna get better. Are you really that stupid? Then I'll tell you straight from your girlfriend. You only know how to cook borscht, said the husband. Then he grabbed his bag, slammed the door and left for good. Jenna stood in a daze. She could not fully realize that the man she loved had just left her. The woman started calling her spouse, but he just dropped the calls. Jenna did not know what to do. She sat down on the couch and cried bitterly. Then she remembered Benjamin's last words about her friend and the log, and suddenly realized that Miranda had probably seduced her husband. Jenna was in rage. She quickly dialed her buddy's number, and upon hearing her voice, she spoke angrily. So that's the kind of snake you are. What's with the late night hit and runs? Perplexed, said Miranda, who was not yet aware of the buddy's arrangement with her husband. Didn't pretend to be a saint. I asked you to help Benjamin with the chores, not to drag him to bed with me. You realize you've ruined our family. Oh, that's what this is about. So Benjamin decided to leave you. Well, that's commendable. Don't put all your troubles on me. Benjamin told you a long time ago to clean yourself up. By the way, he's often told me he likes to make love to me, and you've been acting like a log in bed, so you only have yourself to blame. So you're discussing our sex life with him. I didn't ask him to talk about it. He's the one who initiated your nightly crafts. Now let's end this worthless conversation. I realize you're angry with me, but the train has already left. So please don't annoy me with your calls. With these words, Miranda disconnected the connection. Jenna tried to call her now ex-girlfriend again, but she did not pick up the phone. Three days passed. All this time, the woman tried to call her former friend, but she put her on the blacklist, as well as her husband. 
In desperation, the woman went to Miranda's house. The door was opened by Benjamin. The man looked at his spouse with dislike and rudely asked what she was doing here. Jenna, forgetting about everything, knelt in front of him, hugged his legs with hands made of metal. Let's forget about everything. I'll never remind you of your cheating. Please, just come back to me. I can't live without you. You're my dearest and most beloved person. You have a spell. Don't leave me and my son. Stop humiliating yourself. You disgust me now more than ever. Have you any woman's pride? Get out of here and forget about it. I'll file for divorce myself this very week. I'm not giving up my son. If he wants to see me, I promise to pay child support. Come to your senses. Don't do it. Sobbing, the woman said, go away. It's disgusting to look at you now. And with these words, Benjamin pushed his wife and closed the door in her face. This scene was witnessed by an old woman who lived across the street. The old woman approached Jenna, helped her up from her knees, at the same time saying that a man is not worth such humiliation. The grandmother advised the woman to take all her will in a fist and proudly go away and never bother this man again. Jenna looked at the old woman with a detached look and walked towards the exit. Several days passed. Jenna felt that she had lost interest in life, and on her way home from work, she bought a cat. In the evening, when her son went to bed, emptied the bottle, it seemed to her that all the troubles at that moment went nowhere, and she went to bed with a calm soul. In the morning, she was distraught. The woman felt disgusting, and she gave herself a vow not to take any more strong drinks. However, two days passed, and the heartache of the fact that the man she loved was not with her now, with a new force rose up in the woman. Jenna remembered how easy it became for her when she had consumed a cat, and again her way after work was through the store, where the woman bought a bottle of Belenka. Without noticing it, Jenna was addicted to drinking in the evenings, and once again, when she had a few drinks, she received a call from her mother, who immediately guessed that her daughter was drunk. Camille arrived the very next day, where she learned of the fact that her husband had left Jenna as well as her grandmother's. Her grandson told her that her mom buys a cat every day in the evening and drinks it on her own. Camille decided to talk to her daughter. She told Jenna many things about how life does not end if a man leaves the family. The daughter, after listening to her mother grudgingly, told her for someone else, maybe life doesn't end, but I can't do it without him. Your husband's gone. Why didn't you settle down with another man? I can answer that for you, because he was your one and only. Well, you're right, aren't you? Your father was the only man in my life. But when he was gone, I kept on living my life for you. You have a purpose. It's your son, Jenna. Hearing her mother's last words, hesitated. She looked at Michael and saw how he looked like his father. Jenna saw that next to her, there was a small copy of the beloved man for whom it is worth living. Jenna looked with gratitude at her mother and said, thank you, mom, that you will change my mind. Yes, my son is all I have and I can't betray him. I will reevaluate my outlook on life and try not to hit rock bottom. I need to raise Michael to be a decent person. Well done, my daughter. I really hope you do well. You're a strong person. You have to live for your child. And then you'll see if you meet a decent man to start a family with. I don't need any more men. For me, the most beloved one and only is Benjamin. But now I'll live for my son. After these words to her daughter, Camille went home, calm. She very much hoped that now her daughter would not impose on strong drinks anymore, would only take up with her son. A week passed after Camille's departure, and all that time, Jenna didn't drink. But one day, coming home, the woman saw Benjamin walking in the arms of Miranda. Jenna felt so unbearable and painful inside herself that she wanted to fall asleep and never wake up again. Without realizing what she was doing, she ran to the store, where she bought a bottle of Belenka. Coming home, the woman filled a cut glass and drained it in a volley. Then she sat down at the table in the kitchen, covered her face with her hands, and wept bitterly. 
and at that moment Michael came in from his walk. The boy came into the kitchen and immediately realized what was happening. The child touched his mother's shoulder and softly said, Mom, you promised your grandmother that you will no longer drink this nasty Jenna looked at her son and again filled the glass and again drained it at once. The woman looked at the child and suddenly realized that Michael would always remind her of her loved one. The woman drank another glass and then fell asleep right at the table. The next morning, she felt hungover. She saw that there was a bottle on the table. She wanted to drink at least 100 grams, but she forced herself to overpower herself as it was necessary to go to work. Ready first course in the canteen, Jenna realized that it was not the hangover that tormented her more, but the thought that in the evening she would again think about Benjamin looking at her son. And for that reason, she bought the seagull again after work. As soon as Jenna entered the apartment, she immediately proceeded to the kitchen. She sat down at the table, on which stood an unkilled yesterday's bottle of white water. The woman thoughtfully looked at it, and then resolutely took out a shot glass and splashed 100 grams there. However, she was in no hurry to drink. She got up from the stools, opened the refrigerator, took out pickles and leftover mashed potatoes from there. And only then she drank 100 grams and snacked on the pickle. How long did Jenna sit like that? She herself does not remember. She woke up deep in the night, sitting at the table. The woman realized she had run to the nursery to make sure her son was home. As soon as she saw that Michael was asleep, she proceeded to the hall, where she did not undress. Laying down on the couch, Jenna was awakened in the morning by the ringing of her cell phone. It was her mother Camille calling. Without greeting, she said in a rude manner, how can you do this? You promised me in front of your son that you wouldn't drink hard liquor anymore. Michael called me yesterday, and I was horrified by what he told me. You didn't even bother to make the kid dinner. Now get up and get yourself cleaned up. Wake up Michael and get him ready for school, and don't be late for work yourself. Mom, stop your lectures and your sermons. I don't have time for them right now. My head hurts so bad. That evening, Jenna came home after work and was surprised to find her mother in the apartment, in addition to Michael. The woman grudgingly wrinkled her nose. She understood perfectly well what Camille and Jenna had come for. She was not mistaken as her mother began to reprimand her like a little girl again. Jenna remained silent for a while while frowning her eyebrows and then she couldn't stand it and spoke up. It's easy for you to talk like that because your husband is lying in the grave and you can come to him at any time of the day and talk to him. And I have the fate of watching my loved one go out with another woman who is my ex-girlfriend. And I can't talk to Benjamin because he won't let me near him at gun range. Sometimes I think I'd rather he died and I'd go to his grave every day. What are you talking about? Let him go and live your life. I'd love to, but I can't. I look at Michael every day now and realize how much I miss Benjamin. I sometimes feel like I even hate my own son. I try to suppress that feeling, but it's beyond me. Honestly, I don't know what's happening to me, but I'm having a hard time. That's a lot of stupid things you just said. But if that's what you're saying about your son, my best bet is to take my grandson in. Maybe then you'll realize that your son is more important to you than some fairy love for a scoundrel who went to your friend and insulted you. You want to take Michael. It might be the best option. I think I'll sort out my feelings and my life. A couple days later, Camille left with her grandson for her town. The old woman left with a heavy heart as she realized that now her daughter would have to make a choice either to return her son or to drown her bitter share in a stack. And Jenna, having seen her mother off with Michael, had gone to all sorts of trouble. Now the woman cursed not only her fate, but also the fact that her own mother does not understand her. It seemed to the girl that the whole world turned against her, and there is comfort only in a shot glass. So she did not hesitate to go to the store and buy a bottle of vodka, and then sat at home in the kitchen and drank alone, bemoaning her life. This went on for over a week. During this time, Camille repeatedly called her daughter, and each time she heard her drunken voice in response. 
The old woman tried to urge Jenna to come to the house, but in response she heard only refusal. Camille even offered to get her daughter coded. But Jenna, hearing such a message, rudely told her mother and asked her not to disturb her. Some time passed, and the young woman appeared at work in a drunken state. The supervisor forgave Jenna for the first time, but gave her a strict reprimand and said she would not tolerate such behavior again. A week later, the woman again showed up at work under the influence. This time, the director was ready to kick the employee out, but the staff stood up for her and said that everyone would try to influence Jenna. The workers of the canteen talked to the woman and asked her to come to her senses. She promised that it would not happen again. However, a few days later, Jenna came to work drunk again, and this time the supervisor was categorical. He fired the woman while telling her you're ruining your own life and be thankful that I didn't fire you under the article. Jenna shrugged indifferently at these words. At the moment, she thought she had another reason to drown her sorrows in a drink. After all, she had been unfairly fired from her job, which she soon did. A few days later, Jenna ran out of money. The woman called her mother and asked for a loan. Camille perfectly understood why her daughter needs finances. Therefore, in response, she only offered to come to her to start living here again, as they say with a clean slate. The daughter, hearing her mother's advice, told her that she would never bother her again, and angrily hung up the phone. Jenna agonizingly searched for a way out where she could borrow money. Initially, she had borrowed some money from her acquaintances, but they very quickly ran out of money to pay back the money she had borrowed. She did not have the opportunity, and again acquaintances did not borrow, as they knew where the finances would go. And then Jenna began to sell things from the house for cheap, and at this time, the woman had some dubious acquaintances who often visited her apartment and drank strong drinks together with her. Here Jenna paused in her narration and looked at her dad, studying in the electric train. Kelly sat brooding and looking at one point. When the older woman noticed that her companion had stopped talking, she asked what happened next. Jenna smirked and said softly that the story was almost over, and then continued to tell the story further. When there was almost nothing to sell in the apartment, one of the drinking buddies suggested selling the apartment and at the same time said it's a very easy option. And then, if anything, you will come to live with me in a communal apartment to sell the apartment. I will help you." And Jenna easily fell for this advice. Soon the real estate was sold, and in this regard it was decided to celebrate the event with a bang. A lot of appetizers and hot drinks were bought. Jenna together with a friend, who helped to sell the apartment, organized a party. The next morning, Jenna found herself alone, and the drinking buddy was gone. Nor was the money from the sale of the property. The woman realized she'd been played for a fool. Jenna paused again for a brief moment, then quietly mumbled that her story was over. Kelly looked sadly at her companion and asked, why didn't you go to the police? I didn't file a report. Who would I look for? I don't even remember what he looks like, but he helped you sell the apartment. So there must be witnesses. I don't believe he can be found and I'm in no condition to go to a police station to testify. What are you going to do now? Kelly said, puzzled. I scraped up some money and bought a ticket to my mother. By the way, this acquaintance at least left a little. I had enough money just for the ticket and a bottle of mineral water. Jenna said with a grin. Kelly just wanted to say something. An elderly man sitting across from her interrupted the conversation. He put the magazine aside and spoke softly. I've been listening to this story from beginning to end, and I can't understand what you want from your mother now. The naked eye can see that you go to your mother only to sit on her neck, to extort money and continue your idle life. I didn't ask for your opinion. Read your little magazine. Keep reading it. And don't get involved in other people's conversations. Jenna said angrily. And you're a girl, don't get upset. I was just asking myself a question. Understand that I'm not a judge or the Lord God to judge you and stuff. I'm really wondering why you're going to your mother's. The man's calm voice besieged Jenna's ardor, 
and she thought about the stranger's words. After all, before boarding the train, she had actually thought about the question. The woman sighed sorrowfully and said to the man, I won't be able to answer your question for I don't have the answer. So I've already told you before that now you're not going to your mother to start a new life, but to live the way you've been living. Why am I saying that? I can explain. I don't see you wanting a fresh start. It's not gonna be easy for you. And I even think that your mother will kick you out of the door, since she'll be more worried about your son now. You can argue with me and be rude and all that. But I can tell you that I was in your situation and I was helped once and I am grateful to that person. He's not alive anymore. I want to reach out to you. Here's my phone number. If things get tough, call me. Jenna looked at the gray-haired man with bewilderment. At that moment, she had a lot of questions for this man, but then her stop was announced. Jenna thanked the man and the woman and promptly headed for the exit. A short time later, Jenna was at her mother's house. Camille greeted her daughter warily. The pensioner saw that Jenna after another straying old woman from the threshold asked her daughter, what are you doing here? And may I ask the purpose of your visit? It's funny how you greet your own daughter. Okay, mom, I didn't come here to fight. I'm going to live like a normal person. I don't believe you're saying that. Your face says a lot. Mom, I had a drink last night. I'll tell you all about it. Jenna told her mother the story of how she'd been robbed. However, the woman hid from Camille that all this time she had been drinking strong drinks and at the same time lied that she had sold the apartment in order to move in with her son and live with him. The mother listened to her daughter. She did not know whether to believe Jenna's words or not. The conversation between the two women was interrupted by Michael, who looked at the mother with surprise. Meanwhile, Jenna stretched out her arms and exclaimed, Son, how I missed you. Come here, I'll give you a hug. Camille watched this scene with tears in her eyes. In her heart, the pensioner thought maybe her daughter had really changed, and now she was going to start a new life, where there would be no place for strong drinks. After a few minutes, Jenna asked her mother, Will they feed me here or not? I'm tired and hungry. Camille laughed and hurried to reassure her daughter that she was on her way to set the table. Jenna smiled back and asked her son to help her grandmother in the kitchen. As soon as the landlady entered the kitchen with the boy, the young woman laughed softly. Soon the whole family gathered around the table, where they had dinner. At the same time, Jenna told fictional stories about how she had been living all this time. As soon as dinner was over, Jenna told the household that she wanted to walk for a while and would be home soon. Camille looked at her daughter with surprise and said, It's getting a little late. Why don't you come over tomorrow? It's a day off. I'll take my son for a walk. Mom, yes, I won't be long. Just 10 minutes. I haven't been here for a long time. I miss my hometown. And in a few minutes, Jenna was already out of the apartment. Camille was confused, and something seemed strange to her that her daughter decided to take a walk at such a late hour. However, the older woman tried to push the negative thoughts away from her. She really wanted them to do well now. An hour passed and Jenna was still gone. It was two o'clock and Jenna still hadn't returned. Now Camille was really worried. And then it hit her. She remembered when her daughter had asked Michael to help her in the kitchen with dinner. And then the old woman went to the right place and pulled out a drawer. Here the landlady kept a small stash for a rainy day, which Jenna knew about. Camille took out the money, counted it, and immediately found out that a few 1,000 were missing. The woman realized that her daughter had sent Michael to the kitchen on purpose so that she could stay alone in the room and thus get the money out. Camille was shocked by her daughter's behavior. In the meantime, Jenna had returned in the morning. The drunken mother greeted her daughter with anger, but she waved her hand away indifferently and only asked her where to go to bed. Camille saw that there was no point in talking to Jenna now. The older woman decided to wait for the moment when her daughter would come to bed. Jenna got up only at lunchtime and started to get ready again. And then her mother blocked her way with the words you stole your own mother yesterday. Where are you going now? Why don't you teach me a lesson? 
I've grown out of this age of listening to educational talks. It's all right with you. I check your pockets, and you still have money. But there's no way you're taking it on the sly. I suggest you give the money back to me, and stay home, and don't go anywhere. Otherwise, if you decide to do things your way, you can consider the door to this apartment closed forever. And what are you going to throw your own daughter out? Jenna asked Riley. If I have to, I'm willing to do it. The choice is yours. The daughter smirked, and without saying a word, walked out of the apartment. As soon as Jenna closed the door, then Camille silently cried, which did not escape Michael. The boy went to his grandmother and hugged her tenderly. Then said Grandma, don't cry. You can see that she doesn't need us. So why shed tears about it? Yes, Granson, you're right. We have to move on with you. And don't ever do what your mom did. Jenna returned to her mother's house 24 hours later. Camille opened the door and dryly told her daughter to go to where she had been walking all this time. Jenna tried to push her mother away and go inside. Then the landlady pronounced, if you don't clean up now, get out of here, I will call the police. But my son is here and I have the right to take him away. Don't even think about it. In that case, I'll call the police and child welfare too. And if you haven't got all your brains beaten in yet, you should realize that you're going to lose your son forever. Jenna looked at her mother confusedly. She had not expected such a rebuff. Meanwhile, Camille was determined and repeated her last words. Jenna perplexedly muttered, but where am I to go with nowhere to go? What am I to live on the street? I gave you a choice yesterday and you made it. Now you have to get out of the situation you got into by your own stupidity. You can get a job, and you can find a place to stay in a hostel. Now go away. Jenna stood looking at her mother. She realized that her mother would not let her go in any case and would do what she said. Jenna then asked her mother for her cell phone to make a call. However, Camille refused her request, reasoning that as soon as she gave the cell phone in her hands, Jenna would run away. The young woman felt tears coming to her eyes. She realized that she had nowhere to go. And the only thought that came to mind was to call the man who had offered to help her on the train. And then Jenna held out her mother's phone number and asked her to call her herself. The girl explained to Camille what to say to the man. The elderly woman complied with her daughter's request and in response heard from the caller, call a cab, I'll pick her up myself and pay the fare. Only when you call, Call me back so I know what time she will arrive. After saying that, the man dictated Camille's address. The landlady asked her daughter, who is this stranger? But Jenna only looked at her mother angrily and said nothing. Camille called a cab, and soon the young woman got into the car. The girl sat in the car and wondered what would happen to her next. After all, she did not even know the man she was going to see at the moment. But for some reason, Jenna didn't care what happened to her. After all, she had been kicked out by her own mother. From these thoughts, the young woman laughed and thought that she was a madman. And since she decided to take such a step, a cab was driving down the road. When the woman asked the driver to suspend the car, she explained that she needed to stop by the store. In a few minutes, the girl already got back into the car and the cab drove on. Now Jenna had already completely calmed down and did not even think about what awaited her in the future as the bag contained the purchased cat. Soon the car arrived at the specified address and the girl immediately recognized the elderly man with whom she spoke in the train. She got out of the car and the man paid the cab driver and quietly said, hello, Jenna. My name is William. You're just lucky your mother called in time because in just a little while I would have been out of range. Well, William, now tell me, what's next for me? I hope I don't become a slave in some harem. And to be a concubine, you'll have to work a little harder on your body and your looks. Don't take my words as an attempt to offend you. After a while, you'll understand for yourself. Now tell me what happened and how your mother met you. I understand that you didn't just ask your mother to call me. Things must be really bad in your life. And I'm telling you right now, you don't have to lie to me. Please tell me everything as honestly as you did in the train. 
The young woman looked at her interlocutor with surprise, who waited patiently for an answer. Jenna thought that since she was here, there was no point in hiding anything. Jenna told the truth about how she had arrived, how she had stolen the money and everything else. William listened to her carefully and only then said, Well, I see that you have told me everything honestly, and I will be frank with you. You must decide now what you want from life. Though I know for myself, since I've been in the swamp you're in, you left me to a woman, and I was drowning my sorrows in a shot glass. But one man just suggested that I go on an exciting trip, and I said yes, I suggest you do the same. Are you up for it? Jenna didn't hesitate to say yes. And then William told her that he'd been living in the woods for a year. The man also said that he had eaten forest produce and potatoes that he had planted himself. William told it with such enthusiasm. Jenna was wrinkling her nose at the words of her interlocutor. The young woman did not stop living wild in the forest. The man noticed the girl's discontent. So he measuredly spoke, I realize that it sounds silly, at least in your opinion. But wait, immediately so categorically set up on the so-called adventure. You're disappointed in this life now anyway, so you should agree and take the risk. I already said yes. So why are we having this conversation? Fine, then you can stay in my private room. Don't worry, I won't bother you. I'm not at that age. After a while, William and the young woman took a bus to the forest area, and then the couple followed on foot with backpacks on their shoulders. The man and woman were walking through the woodland at around six o'clock. Jenna during the movement had already repeatedly regretted that she had agreed to this adventure. William perfectly saw the irritation of his companion, but he did not pay attention to it. Soon the couple came to a horseshoe-shaped lake. The man pointed with his companion's hand to an embankment on the shore. Jenna shrugged her shoulders perplexedly and asked, and what does it mean? We're going to live there. What do you mean? We're going to live there. There's nothing there, just hills of land. That's where you're wrong. It's not just a hill, it's a dugout. Why should I tell you? Let's take a walk and you can see for yourself. William went on walking. The girl followed him. Soon they came to the dugout, and the girl looked at it with interest. Meanwhile, the man pulled back the shelf and made his way inside. Jenna followed him once they were inside. The young woman began to look at the dugout from the inside. She saw a nightstand on a spring shelf, the stove and the wide Jenna. Jenna examined everything thoroughly, and then turned to the man, and we will live here, and do what? We're going to build up your fortitude and live here. You're gonna live here for a year. You don't know the way back. Stores where you can buy. No green snake. Neither do I. The only thing you'll have to do is survive and feed yourself and me. For that we have guns to shoot game and rods to catch fish. And we have time to plant potatoes to diversify our diet. You can't be serious. Jenna was startled. I meant what I said. I've been through the ordeal myself. I come here often now, because I've grown to love it. I live here for six months at a time, but this time I changed my tradition and will stay here with you for a year. And the days went by. At first Jenna was angry with William and threatened him with the police that he had kidnapped her and kept her here by force. And the man only laughed in response. And then the young woman boycotted the man. She stopped talking to him and refused to eat, saying that she was not ready to eat fish in such quantities, and as luck would have it, the man was having trouble shooting game. William tried to ignore the young woman's irritation. However, Jenna had not actually eaten for four days, and the man began to worry about the girl's physical condition. He thought about how he could change her mind about her stroppiness, and the case solved everything. A funny case. William went hunting and shot a hare. He went to the dugout and cheerfully peddled us. When he was already approaching the place, he heard a frantic cry of his ward. The man quickly hurried to the place of the source of the sound. As he approached from where the scream was coming, he saw Jenna fighting off a swarm of bees. He swiftly removed his bucket and rushed to the rescue. 
The man threw his jacket over the girl and took her to safety. And then, trying not to laugh, asked, and what carried you there in that tree to that hollow? Why ask? I understood perfectly well myself, which with a nose pronounced Jenna. And while scratching the groomed places, just without guessing, I thought that you would explain everything to me too. I want you to take me to the city. I don't like living here, but you agreed to this adventure on your own, and now you've decided to back out. Where's your restraint? Your self-control? I did, but now I take it back. There's only one thing I'm greeting grits and fish. I'm bored, and I need to relieve stress, and there are no stores here. And I warned you that you couldn't buy green snake here, and you verbally signed a contract for everything that happens to you here. And you surprise me. I mean, lately you haven't had to choose what to eat because you've only been thinking about how to buy hard liquor. And now all of a sudden you have needs. You're sick of fish and all that other stuff. All right, let's not be sad. If you don't like our diet, you're welcome to it. After all, you're a chef and you can make a stunning hair dish. You shot the game. We have meat. Why didn't you say something? I didn't have time. You're not in a dugout. I answered your questions right away. Now it's your turn to answer. What were you doing near that hollow tree? I was hungry for sweets and just to eat. And there's honey in here. So I thought I'd get it. I thought that bees do not sit in the hollow all the time. They should collect honey with tears in their eyes, said Jenna. The man couldn't stand it and laughed. He already knew that the girl occasionally left the dugout without him. But William did not expect her to go to the wild banks for food. He saw how the girl looked at him resentfully. And so he said, well, not to his lips. I was really worried about you giving up food to get away from here. And I knew that when I went hunting, leaving the dugout. But I thought you were picking berries so you wouldn't starve. What did you think? Climbing up to the wild bees, the beekeeper's bees would go wild too. If a stranger trespassed on their property, now let's decide we're gonna live peacefully, like Leopold and the mice. And if you agree one bit, let's go to the dugout. And you make a mean hair dinner, Jenna Schmeiga. But the very afterwards, William got up from the ground and they went. The man watched the girl who quietly lost a tear and did it so that he did not see it. William felt sorry for the young woman, but he realized that if he paused now and took pity on her, he would ruin her own fate, for she would find a way to buy herself a strong drink when she returned to town. The man suppressed the urge to pity the girl. As soon as they arrived at the dugout, then William pulled out a first aid kit and called out to Jenna. He immediately treated the bites on her, and then he gave her an allergy pill. As it was, the man still couldn't help but feel sorry for the girl. He pulled out a packet of hellfire from his hiding place and handed Jenna a few cubes. The young woman, upon seeing the sugar, happily expelled. William could not restrain himself and smiled, as so sincerely the girl was pleased with the treat. From the outside, it might have seemed as if a small child had been given a candy bar. A month flew by as the couple lived on the shore of the lake. And after a while, William noticed that Jenna with pleasure goes fishing, picks blueberries, cranberries, and also perches potatoes on a small plot of land. The man from that moment realized that the ward will be able to cope with her pernicious passion, but it is only necessary to wait for time. He involuntarily rejoiced in his soul that this young woman will be able to start a new life where there will be no drinking strong drinks. Autumn was approaching. The woman collected mushrooms and dried them for the winter, while thinking how they would live here when the frost came. The girl is fearful without it, and so she turned to the man. It's going to be winter soon. We don't have any warm clothes. Maybe we should go back after all. Ah, no dearie, and no again. I told you, I've been here a year. So I've been prepared for winter. Warm clothes are packed and stashed away. The only thing we need to do is stock up on firewood because sometimes there will be bad weather and it will be difficult to go outside to chop wood. You and I will just have to work hard. 
And you and I can do it. You've already proved to me that you have a backbone. Now it's up to you to discover it for yourself. William, I never thought it was possible to live in the woods like this. The way you lived out here all by yourself. Weren't you bored? No, I can tell you why. I talked to the trees, and I felt different. And also sitting on the shore of the lake, talking to the water. And you can't imagine how I felt. I felt like I was part of nature, and you weren't pulled in the slightest. Civilization perplexed Jenna. When I spent my first year here, I really wanted to come back. The older man said thoughtfully, How old were you, William, when you first came here? Forty-six years old. You said that the first time you were here, you were drawn back. And then what happened? Why did you stop wanting to live at home? Especially since you have an apartment unlike me. You said yourself you've been coming here for years for a few months. Can you explain that to me? It is extremely important to me. The young woman said anxiously. Well, I'll answer your question. When I first spent a year here, I returned home and began to find out about my woman. But as it turned out, she was killed in an accident, hit by an SUV. I just wanted to find out about her fate. My love for her was gone. Even when I was in the woods, as I realized that she didn't love me, she was just using my money. I was working as a deputy at an agribusiness firm at the time. The whole thing is that my ex-wife lived with me for only five years and during this time did not want to give birth to a child from me. And I asked her very much about it, and I can tell you, even more that guessed, that she lives with me only for money. But I'm in favor of it. But I turned a blind eye. How could you do that? That's a long question. It's just that I loved her and I thought she'd love me too. I mean, I hoped she'd love me back, but it didn't work out. I gave her the summer house, bought her a car, and even gave her money to start her own company. I hoped all this time that she will love me, but you do not bring money to me. Your wife at least went to the man she loved, Jenna asked excitedly. She went to a friend of mine. So at once I lost my wife and my friend. The interlocutor said dejectedly, but why did she do that? That's a good question. I'll answer frankly. My wife asked to give her a fabulous amount of money, which I did not have, and I could not take a loan because I was paying off the loan for the car. And the most interesting thing is that the car was purchased for her. All in all, I turned out to be a fool, but I don't regret it because I love that woman. The only thing I regret is that the son from my first marriage did not supply me with money. I paid for that too. He wouldn't even talk to me after that. William, you have a terrible fate. Almost crying, said the young woman. And so the winter flew by, spring came, and the day approached when the girl came to this dugout for the first time, and on the eve of a significant day for Jenna William, turned to the girl. Tell me, please, what has this year given you? You know, William, a lot. It's as if I have purified my soul, rethinking my whole life. The first time was not easy for me, and you know it very well. Thanks to you and your patience, you were able to do the impossible. I am very ashamed of the way I lived a while ago. Ashamed in front of my son and my mother. Now I am definitely making a promise that I will never again take a shot glass in my hands at 100 and make vows. It's more important for me to know who you care about more than your son or self-defeating yourself. That your husband left you. I don't think about Benjamin at all. And now I think that I am even grateful that he left me because this man did not love me. But I also have a counter question. Where is the man who brought you William to live here for a year? And he is long gone from this world. I can tell you that man had a heart of gold. There are very few people like him on earth. And there's a lot more I can tell you about him. But I think you'll visit me again. Where do I live in the city? You know if I'm not there, I'm here. You sly William. You're well aware that I don't know the way here. Then catch me in the city. The man said, laughing, and went on. Just leave me a note at the door. And when you come again, I'll be home and I'll show you the way to the dugout. Now let's get serious. I see that you are ready for free sailing, and you know what you have to do now. 
Perhaps you've been told this before, and you've been wrong and stepped on the same rake again. I really hope I'm the last person to say something like that to myself. Now let's go fishing for the last time. We're going back to civilization tomorrow. The next day, the man and the woman returned home. They took their time and shaved deeper into the forest. The couple had not gone far at all. As suddenly Jenna turned and looked at the dugout and tears came to her eyes. She waved her hand and mentally said to herself that she would definitely come back here again. And at the same moment, William turned the young woman to him and said affectionately, don't cry. You should be grateful to this place. Now I can tell you with certainty that you have a fine figure that would be the envy of any model, and you're a good-looking girl with great looks. Soon the man and the woman were already in the city. Jenna hugged William fatherly and told him that she was very grateful for everything he had done for her. The older man was embarrassed by the praise and replied that he had no credit for Jenna's ability to change. The woman, in turn, pronounced that he was underestimating himself. The couple. They talked for a while, and Jenna wanted to leave, but suddenly asked the interlocutor a question William. And do you have a dream to talk to your son? But you told me that woman didn't give birth to you. What son? Jenna said perplexed. The elderly man smiled at the interlocutor and answered that before meeting his beloved he had been married once and had a son Kevin. Life with his wife did not work out. And when the boy was 13 years old, he and his wife divorced by mutual consent. And when this happened, Kevin flatly refused to accept his father. William also said that for a long time tried to establish relations with his son, but all attempts were unsuccessful. And when Kevin was 18 years old, he simply told his father that he never appeared in front of him again. Hearing these words, Jenna looked at her interlocutor with tears in her eyes. She felt sorry for him at this moment. She understood William's state of mind, as her son probably also felt dislike for her after what she had done. Some time passed and now Jenna was standing in an elegant timeless suit outside the cafe. Admiring the sign, she looked around as if she wanted to tell people to look at the lovely cafe. Come in, don't be shy, have a specialty borscht. And then her attention was attracted by a man. She looked closely and recognized him as her ex-husband. Jenna called his name softly. Benjamin looked at the woman and froze in amazement. He too recognized her as his ex-wife. He was puzzled because he had separated from her a few years ago, and now he was facing not the wife area from whom he had left, but a beautiful, spectacular blonde. Benjamin walked over to Jenna and barely audibly said, I can't believe my eyes. Is it really you? How is it possible that you are so reincarnated? You're absolutely right. It's me, Benjamin. It's the same Gianni area you compared me to a few years ago. Yeah, now you're looking at your ex-wife who's enjoying every day. But how is that possible? I was told you drank yourself to death, and then you disappeared. I have a feeling you have an informant, my ex-girlfriend Miranda, who became your lover. Although I could be lying, maybe she's already your wife. But as you can see, I am who I am standing in front of you now. And I can say that I am happy with my life. And I am grateful to you for leaving me at the time. But I see you've stopped looking after yourself. You've grown braids that don't suit you at all. You've lost a lot of weight. What's Miranda feeding you? I broke up with her. I don't care about your relationship with Miranda or who you're living with. I'm not interested in that at all. Come to the cafe. I'll feed you and don't worry. The whole meal will be free for you. And there's borscht on the menu, which you used to love back in the day. By the way, I own this cafe. My husband gave it to me. You're married. Yes. And you thought I'd spend the rest of my life suffering for you. You wiped my feet. When I was fat, I had a great husband with whom I'm happy. By the way, are you going to eat? Because I'm waiting for my husband. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Tell me about your life. I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. And here comes my husband. And at that moment a cool car was parked near the cafe, from which a tall brunette in an expensive sports suit got out. He approached my wife, gently hugged her around the waist, 
and then smacked his nose on her cheek and said, Hi, honey, may I ask who it is next to you talking in my absence? I feel like I'm getting jealous. Just an old acquaintance. Why would you be jealous? You know you're the only man for me. And there's no one else like you in the whole universe. You tell me how our daughter Sophia is sitting with our moms and entertaining them with her babbling. And they're arguing about who Sophia said the word grandma was addressing. It's very interesting. I can imagine our moms arguing amongst themselves. It would be fun to watch this scene, Jenna said, looking tenderly at her husband. Meanwhile, Benjamin stood nearby and listened to the couple's dialogue. The man was surprised to see the spouses talking tenderly to each other. And he could not understand how the ex-wife had changed so dramatically for the better. He felt angry at himself for pushing Jenna away and not giving her the impetus to transform and become what she was now. Meanwhile, Ethan, correcting his wife, said, we're just going to stand here. Actually, your husband is hungry and just wants to taste your specialty borscht at this very minute. Sure, let's go quickly. Your favorite place by the window. As always, freely replied the woman, taking the companion of life under the arm. And after that, the couple went into the cafe. The spouses sat down at a table, and after a few minutes, the waiter came to them with a tray and put a plate of borscht in front of Evan. The man hummed contentedly and took a spoonful, then winked at his wife, and only then began to eat Jenna. She watched her husband eating the first dish and thought to herself what a lucky woman she was. When Ethan ate, his wife suddenly said, and remember how we met you. How can you forget it? I went not to my mother, but here in the city, when I spent a year in the forest, and came to me in the restaurant about work, interrupted his wife, Ethan, and immediately continued further. I was surprised at the time. A pretty woman came in, only dressed in a hoodie, who, as they say, took the bull by the horns. You struck me at once, saying that you were a first-class cook, and then you immediately asked me to hire you and give you half of your salary on the first day. I was dumbfounded by your insolence. Did you at least explain why I should give you half of your salary? Yes, I did. I needed money to rent a room. So I asked for an advance. Jenna said with a laugh. Yeah, and from Isabella, I told you I couldn't take your word for it that you were a first-rate cook. But you were so confident in your culinary abilities that you suggested. Let me cook a dish now and you will appreciate it. And you said it all with a kind of pathos, and at the same time simple. And that's when I agreed to this scam, and you really did make a masterful borscht. With this dish, I must have bribed you. Laughing again, the young woman said, not only that, as soon as you came into my office, you immediately liked me. And then of course, you impressed me with everything else. By the way, it was hard to court you. You turned out to be a stubborn girl, but I managed to win you over. Wait, why are you in such a nostalgic mood? Wasn't it that strange man you were standing outside the cave, talking to that brought back a memory? Who is he? If it's no secret, Jenna smiled at her husband's question and was silent for a while, then quietly said, you are right. It was this man who brought me to the world where I changed and met you. It was my ex-husband Benjamin. Our life with him, you know very well. I told you everything honestly then. And he didn't hold anything back. And how I was going through a divorce. And then I just started singing. I told you too. Knowing my favorite thing, that you told me everything honestly. And this man, I thought he was your ex-husband. I can tell you one thing. Your ex-husband is a fool. You're a loving mother a wonderful hostess, a skilled cook, Ethan said, and then smiled mysteriously and whispered in a whisper, you're also an excellent wife with whom it's not boring to spend the night. But you know what I mean, don't you? Bah, you about Harnick, said Jenna. And after that, the couple laughed. The couple reminisced for some time about the development of their relationship, about how their joint daughter was born and how Jenna made peace with her mother and was able to win back her son's favor with her. The spouses would have talked for a long time, but then Ethan's cell phone rang. It was his mother calling the man. 
He picked up the phone and heard his mother's joyful voice. You won't believe it, but just now our Sophia said the word grandmother. You do realize that means grandmothers, right? Now we have nothing to argue about because our granddaughter addressed this word to both of us. But that's really great. Jenna and I congratulate you sincerely. Don't miss me. We will be soon. And Ethan disconnected the phone and looked at his wife, who had heard the entire phone conversation, and they laughed wordlessly. Because their moms had long ago argued about who would be the first to be addressed by the word grandmother. And now this dispute was solved. And now the couple was in the car and driving home. Jenna was mentally thinking what an interesting way her fate had turned out. She perfectly understood that she had broken a lot of wood in her life, but right now she was doing well. She had a loving husband, two children, a wonderful relationship with her mother and her husband's parents. And then Jenna suddenly remembered one person and immediately turned to her spouse. It's time for us to take a vacation and go to one man who is surely waiting for us. I'm talking about William. My mom talked to him a couple months ago and he said he's expecting us in May. But he said if we go, it'll be the rest of the summer at the very least. Do you think we can afford such a long vacation? Why not? Our family will watch the restaurants and cafes and we'll spend time in the woods. At least I'll get to experience what you experienced when you were there. You know, I have a surprise for Uncle William. Which one is it? Asked the husband to his wife. A fun surprise. Laughingly replied Jenna. But it's not interesting. Speak already any with his wife, said Ethan. Jenna looked fondly at her husband and said that she would tell him everything at home. The husband wanted to object, but then changed his mind. Because he knew that if I said at home, then now will not tell anything. The man jokingly threatened his spouse and in response muttered that she would pay for her intrigues at night. Jenna looked lovingly at her spouse and responded in agreement. Soon the couple arrived home where they were met by their two moms who began to talk about Sophia. Ethan and his wife listened and laughed. And at the same time, Michael came out of the room who immediately turned to the mother and her husband. At last you have come for the two grandmothers have been giving me no rest. Speaking as Sophia addressed them both. Son, it's okay, it's okay, we can get over it. But now we are here to help you, and we will listen to our moms ourselves. Jenna said with a smile and ruffled her son's hair. The evening flew by. Sophia had long been asleep in the nursery. The saints were also getting ready for bed, as was Michael. Only the couple was still sitting in the kitchen discussing household trivia. The couple talked for some more time, and soon Jenna was saying that it was time for them to go to bed too. But she was stopped by Ethan, who said, This isn't going to work. Come on, what are you up to? What are you talking about? The wife asked confusedly, So I have to remind you what kind of surprise you want to give William. You told me today you'd tell me at home. What's he talking about? I told you all about Uncle William. Except he has a dream, and I want to fulfill it. He wants to talk to his son, who he hasn't spoken to in years. I don't think this man will be hard to find. He lives in the same town as my mom and Uncle William. You and I just need to convince him to come over to my dad's house and just talk to him. This man's name is Kevin. We know the last name, too. We know Haley. Well, it's not a bad idea to thank your mentor for keeping you prisoner in the woods for a year. I'm just wondering how you're gonna get Kevin to visit his father. By telling him how his father once reached out to a woman who was on the verge of falling. I'll tell him about me and what a wonderful man William is. Now let's get some rest. After all, tomorrow we have to tell our household that we will be going on vacation for quite some time. Soon the couple together with the children and Camille came to visit Jenna's mother. They had left a few days before the meeting with William to find Kevin and persuade him to visit his father. Upon arrival, Jenna immediately began looking for William's son. In this she was helped by his mother, whose friend had previously worked at the passport office. Camille turned to her and a friend, thanks to old connections, got Kevin's address. And as soon as Jenna received the long-awaited address of the man, the same day, 
together with her husband, went to her son William. And now the couple stood in front of the front door. Jenna looked at her husband with excitement, and he, in turn, winked at her and pressed the bell. The door was opened by a girl of about eight years old, who took a stern look at the uninvited guests, and then said, Who are you here to see? We're looking for your daddy, Kevin. Is he home? Yes. I'll get him. And with these words the girl ran away. Soon a man came out to the couple and looked at the guests incredulously, and then asked what he owed the visit to. Jenna introduced herself then her husband, and only then said that they had a very important conversation about William. As soon as Kevin heard his father's name, he sharply replied that he wasn't going to hear anything about him. And that's when Jenna spoke up. Look, you didn't even let me say two words, and already you're living right. Unlike you, your father gave me a helping hand, although decent people wiped my nose, because I was a drunken person. All I'm asking you to do is to listen to me, and then show me your inhospitality. All right, the landlord said forcefully, and immediately added you still have 15 minutes to make your speech. Soon the couple was sitting in the kitchen, Kevin at the head, and Jenna explained the circumstances under which she had met William. She looked out the window as she narrated her life. She smiled at times, and at other times frowned. And when the woman was nearing the final of her story, tears flowed from her eyes, which she neither relished. At this point, Jenna was talking about how they had said goodbye to William, and how the man had told her about his dream. As soon as she finished speaking, she looked sharply at Kevin and said, And then I was wrong to come to my son. I betrayed him, left him to his fate, and found salvation in a drink. But your father didn't abandon you. He just mutually decided with your mom that they can no longer live together. That's how life works, and Uncle William didn't leave you. He thought about you all the time. I want you to realize that your father is a good man. There are very few of them on this earth. And if you want, I'll get down on my knees. I want you to go and visit your daddy. It's his dream. After these words, Jenna got up from the stools and wanted to kneel down. Kevin's wife came up to her and took her by the hands and told her not to kneel. My spouse will go to his father, and not alone, but together with me and our daughter. On the wall, it's time to meet your grandfather. And now let's drink tea, or you will really say that we are not hospitable hosts. And with these words, the woman looked at her husband, who was looking down at the floor. Kevin at this point was a little puzzled by the guest's story. After all, all his life he had blamed only his father for leaving them alone, and considered him a traitor. And here this woman had shown his dad to be a completely different person. And just a couple hours later, Jenna, along with her children and her husband, as well as Kevin and his family, stood outside William's door. Kevin glanced at his wife, and she determinedly pressed the bell button. A few minutes later the door opened. The owner of the apartment appeared, wiping his hands on a kitchen towel. William glanced at the guests and froze when he saw Kevin. The man's chin quivered. He kept trying to say something, but he couldn't. And then a tear rolled down his cheek immediately, and then another. Jenna, seeing this scene, involuntarily cried herself, and then pushed Kevin with the words, why are you standing there? Come on. Go and hug your father. Kevin, after these words, got up and resolutely went to his father, and then hugged him. They stood like that for a few minutes. During this time, everyone else present was silent as they realized how important this moment was to the son and the father. As soon as Kevin squeezed his hands once, he said, Father, I'm sorry, but you don't have to say anything, son. The most important thing is that you are with me and I can talk to you. You and I will talk about many things, since we are going together with you, but only for a month to go to the dugout, about which we have heard so much. I don't know where you put us, since it's going to be crowded. And you will also talk not only to me, but also to my wife and my daughter. I mean your granddaughter. See how rich you've gotten overnight, Kevin said with a smile.